So I'm expanding on a subject from the last video. In the last video, I listed like the the apps that I was going to use to do these different uh, creative tasks that I normally would do on my Mac. I went through like video editing, photo editing, uh, graphic design, and so forth, and listed the apps that I thought were going to be useful for me. But when I did photo editing, I mentioned uh, I showed Darktable, I mentioned Darktable and GIMP as photo editors, but I didn't realize at the time, I really didn't think about it until a few of you had commented and I started reading more about it that Krita can actually be a good tool to edit photos in. So I'm going to revisit the idea of photo editing in Linux just for a brief bit in this video. I'm not going to do deep dives and do some major edits, but I just want to talk about now I have three apps that I'm going to be uh, bouncing between and, and figuring out the role that each plays. I may only land on two of them, but either way, I wanted to talk about this and maybe show you guys that, you know, that Krita can do some pretty cool photo editing. But first, let me go to, uh, to Darktable and show you um, kind of what, what I like so far about Darktable. Uh, so first off, the cool thing about Darktable to me is that um, it's pretty snappy and you know, granted I only have this is just like a little sample library only four four photos three of them look almost the same uh, four photos just a just a small sample library I'm just kicking the tires and some of this stuff to figure out my workflow before I start building a larger library and start doing more edits so this is just a small sample but so far I'm loving the way that uh, Darktable works uh, this is an edit I was working on earlier. In relative terms, this is pretty snappy. And like I said, the the little PC I bought isn't you know the fastest thing in the world, but this runs pretty good on it. With this photo here, I just done a, a handful of um, adjustments, most mostly. Let me show you here. So first, I did a, the monochrome setting. Then I did some tone curves. That was already there. I think I maybe adjusted a little bit of the levels. And then I did, actually the, le the levels adjustment was the one that I actually painted the mask on. And this is one of the things I like about Darktable. It has a pretty good uh, masking feature in there. So I can use, right now I'm using a Wacom tablet and uh, using the the mask draw mask tool in Darktable, and I can go in here and draw on the area that I want the uh, the you know I want where I want the area to be affected. So that seems pretty simple, but that was one of the that's like one of the the, the things on my list of things I was looking for and something to edit photos in is I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty simple when it comes to my photo editing like I want I want really good controls over all tone ranges and controlling contrast controlling uh, ex exposure in many different ways different ways to control exposure and adjust exposure I want to be able to dodge and burn in selective areas so do do um, local adjustments preferably by being able to brush on areas with with a tablet um, so I like to mimic kind of how I would work in the darkroom when when I was doing darkroom prints like I like mimicking that feel digitally and so far Darktable checks that box and uh, has done really well with that and like I said these are just small tests but so far so good um, now GIMP obviously uh, has great brush tools and I can set up uh, a dodge and burn situation where I can brush on these adjustments and whatnot. The uh, So far my biggest gripe with GIMP is that it needs an external application to interpret the raw files which is not a huge deal I just have to get it set up right now my GIMP my instance of GIMP for some reason isn't recognizing my Darktable instance to, to utilize Darktable to uh, translate those raw files so I got to figure that out 
but GIMP seems like it'll be a good tool for photo editing. I've, like, I've, I've done a little bit of photo editing GIMP before, obviously. But the one that's really surprised me in the past couple of days after you guys have commented is Krita. Um, let me just open up this photo. I was working on this earlier, but I'm going to do a, a brand new instance just to just to show you the, the the simple process of opening a raw file and then editing it in Krita. So this is a raw file from a Fujifilm camera. And similar to the way Photoshop does is when you try to open a raw file in Photoshop, Photoshop opens Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Camera Raw gives you the opportunity to tell Adobe, to tell Photoshop how to interpret that raw file, what adjustments do you want it to be made before it converts it to an editable uh, file. And for Photoshop, it's PSD, but um, other applications could be converting it to a TIFF file or whatnot. But you're always, whenever you're editing a raw file, you're always at some point you're always converting it from the raw file to a JPEG or a TIFF or something else. And this is what Krita is doing in this first dialog box. It's, it's asking you, how do you want this to be uh, translated with demosaicing de adjustments, white balance adjustments, exposure adjustments, and all these different things, and even camera, camera profiles. So there's a whole bunch here that I haven't dug into a lot, but the only bummer part, well, there's a couple downer parts, which, like again, I, uh, I don't want to be nitpicky, but there's a couple downer parts. One part is that, I wish that these adjustments would update live here when after I do them, but it's not a big deal. I, I do like the fact that um, it gives me an opportunity to to make adjustments to how the raw file is interpreted before I bring it into Krita. Once it's here, what I have been doing, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust my workflow as I go along. So what I'm doing today may be different later, but I'm gonna add a filter layer to my to my to my uh, image and pick the adjustments I want first I'm gonna do uh, take it to monochrome I do a lot in black and white so a lot of the a lot of the photo edits you see will be uh, done in black and white actually that was a filter layer hold on let me see all right so I'm gonna just show you a couple things that I have been playing around with the last couple of days I'm gonna first I'm gonna add a filter mask and I'm gonna go black uh, desaturate for this first one I like working in black and white you see a lot of my works black and white and then I'm gonna add another one actually I gotta click that first add another one and let's do next I'm gonna add a curve adjustment which in Krita it's called color adjustment I'll rename this I'm just going to play around and just give it some dramatic contrast here. And since these are filter mask, in, in theory, I could add another one with um, more dramatic uh, exposure adjustments and then paint paint that on as well. I'm not going to go that far right now. I just wanted to get, give you an example of just from a little bit of playing around, I, I could see that Krita could, could give me a really cool workflow to, to edit photos non-destructively too I might add so these are just these are just filter um, filter masks so I could turn them on turn them off and I'm pretty sure I can edit them so it took me a second to figure it out but the point is that these are uh, non-destructive so I can go in and make further adjustments without having to make new layers or whatnot I can I can tweak the filter that I already applied on there there are similar actions and similar things in Photoshop that makes you feel kind of at home with this workflow in Krita so and I know GIMP especially 2.99 or has even more non-destructive uh, capabilities than the old versions of GIMP does so GIMP is ex expanding some of these things but so far, I'm really enjoying Krita for some of these edits. Now, I think Darktable still has a lot of what I need built in. But I do know there there are times where I want to go further and I want to stack all these filters and, and, and do a whole bunch more advanced edits. And I think right now Krita might be uh, with the app I go to. Because, again, 
I don't need another um, app to, um, to to for it to interpret the raw files. Uh, it's it's re relatively lightweight. These files that Krita saves with the photo edits. Let me see. They're not that huge. I mean, they're 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 not like uh, um, you know, working with the just an XMP file and a raw file, but they're not that that big. Let's see here. So it's like 160. Eight megs for that edit that I just did now. Not a huge file, really, in in relative terms. But anyway, so Darktable and Krita are really, I think, the 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 leaders for me right now in terms of photo editing. Uh, now I do have, in terms of photo editing in Linux in general, I do have a few concerns or a few things I'm still I'll, I will still be working out and fine tuning. And the one the big thing is how do, how am I going to manage my photo library? And this isn't just a Linux problem. I had this problem on Mac because this is like a me problem, figuring out how I want to manage my library. Since I don't, my, my photo library is just built up over, over time. There's no, oftentimes no specific project or anything like that. I just, I collect the photos. I shoot what I like to shoot and I organize them by year, month, and day. So nothing fancy, try to keep it very simple. But I have many years of photos built up and right now I have Capture One indexing all of them as one catalog. Now I'm debating whether to let Darktable do that as well or to split it up into smaller libraries, which I think might be a smart idea. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do year by year or what, but that's something I'm working out. And that's not just a Linux issue, it's a Mac issue. It's, it's like I said, it's how I'm approaching things. The other thing I'm figuring out, and I think I think Krita answered this one, is when I do need to do larger, more advanced edits, what am I going to use? I thought maybe it was going to be GIMP, and it still might, but right now Krita kind of has the edge in that, just from the quick tests I have done. Um, I need to understand my color management process from importing to editing to, and then eventually to printing. So printing is the other other concern. But first, color management, though, I need to get all that dialed in. I have a new monitor coming. I'll show you guys when I get that installed. So that monitor will be nice. But I need to figure out color management, even though I do work a lot in black and white. And then printing is possibly the, the biggest question mark for me. And we're going to go through a lot of the different options I'm going to toy around with with printing. For now, I mean, I still have my Mac, so I can print from them if I need to. And technically, the Epson photo I own has a iPad app and I have an iPad so I, technically I could print from the iPad. I can print and I have printed from the Darktable print module but in the situations where I need a specific ICC profile for a specific paper I have to figure that part out and that's really the big question mark for me. So I'm going to do some more experimenting but I just want to give you an update that thanks to some of your comments and some of the th I, I went to do more research and realized how awesome Krita can be for photo editing. And now I'm trying Krita out for editing photos. So that's pretty cool. That's really the gist of this video. Sometimes I ramble. If you guys have watched my photography ones, you guys know that. So hopefully this wasn't too long. And I will update you guys soon. I'm going to get a new monitor. I'll let you know what that looks like as soon as I get it. And that's it for now, guys. I'll talk to you soon.